Welcome to the Osmosis Daily Report on the Coronavirus Pandemic. I'm Dr. Isha Sai. I'm a Chief Medical Officer here at Osmosis. I'm also a Pediatric Infectious Disease Physician, and I used to work at the CDC in the Division of Viral Diseases doing virus outbreak research. Today we're going to talk about digital surveillance technology. And I wanted to do that by looking at what different countries around the world are doing in terms of digital surveillance to find individuals that are sick and find folks that may be exposed to those folks that need quarantine. So let's start with China. So in China, they're having individuals fill out a survey and also log in to different locations that they go to so they know where people are moving. And they're assigning individuals a green, yellow, or red QR code. And that colored code basically tells folks where they're allowed to go. So based on your color, you're allowed to travel you know, within a province, for example. Uh, if you're an amber code holder or yellow code holder, uh, you may not be allowed to travel at all, and if you're red, you might need to be tested or quarantined. In fact, you can see in this picture here, folks are lining up to uh, be on a train, to board a train, and to do that, they would need a green QR code. A major concern about that is regarding privacy, and you know, when you have this much data on people's movements and their personal health data, you also want to make sure it doesn't get into the wrong hands, uh, specifically getting into the black market. Now, in addition, China has also deployed what they call opto-electronic technology. There's a company called iRay, and one of the things that they do is temperature detection. They have scanners in public locations, for example, the airport, railway station, bus stops, etc., and they can detect individuals that are warmer, basically giving off more heat, irradiating more heat off their body, and that would imply that they have a fever. So another way to kind of do surveillance for fevers in a very public setting. Now another technology that they've deployed in Hong Kong is using electronic wristbands and this is for folks arriving into the country and they wear the wristband for a couple of weeks to make sure that they don't develop symptoms. So it's kind of a two-week quarantine period for folks to ensure that they don't introduce disease into the country. This is what the wristband looks like and a person who had to go through this said he was instructed to walk around the house, so mapping out the house and then it would connect to his smartphone and it would inform authorities if he left the house and they actually had uh, heavy fines and imprisonment for six months if he violated those conditions. So Russia in some ways is going further than this. So rather than simply tracking people's movements, they're requiring people to apply for permits to move in the first place. They describe it here, they say basically anyone over the age of 14 who wants to go someplace would have to go online, register their trip wherever they want to go, and then apply for a permit. And then if that's granted, then they're allowed to go on the trip and return. And then along the way, if they get stopped, they can show that they have a permit for that travel. Another thing Russia has been doing is they've been deploying facial recognition technology to enforce a lot of their policies. So for example, they will require people stay quarantined or isolated and then facial recognition technology that is mounted in many public spaces can monitor if anyone is violating those terms and they say they actually have identified a number of people within less than half a minute of leaving their homes and, and they've basically been picked up by, this, by these cameras. Now in Europe, a very different approach has been taken they've essentially looked at data aggregation. So no longer are they looking at the individual level of a person or their face. They're looking at whether mobile operators can share and aggregate data so they can identify where people are spending time in big crowds. So for example, if many mobile phones are all going to a certain park, then the mobile aggregated data would be shared with the public health authority that could then say that park needs to be shut down or maybe that park needs to have uh, enforcement come and check out what may be happening there if there's an event. And these are called hot zones for the disease. Now in Singapore, a different approach has been taken. They basically asked their citizens to download an app called Trace Together. The app has Bluetooth technology and what it does is when two people with the app and uh, their Bluetooth turned on approach each other, get within two meters or about six feet of each other, both devices record that encounter. Now let's say this keeps happening and I have a log of all the people I've been in close proximity with and I develop COVID-19. Well now my phone has a record of everyone I've been in close contact with in the previous two weeks and that information can easily be sent back to the public health authorities 
so that they know who to contact. And that, that can even be done automatically. The phones themselves can say, hey, somebody you're in touch with on Thursday has COVID-19 now, and so you need to be quarantined. And this is happening not just in Singapore, but in other countries as well, where they're quickly adopting this technology. Australia, for example, has really done the same exact thing. And one key thing at the bottom here to note is that they say for the app to be successful, for this to work, enough people have to download it. And so they say just under half of the population would need to be involved for this system to actually make sense. So it's in that context that now Apple and Google have formed a partnership around COVID-19. And there's two phases to what they want to do. In phase one, they're essentially describing something similar where you can have a public health app that's downloaded on your Google device or your uh, Apple device. And there's interoperability between those apps. Phase two is actually a much bigger project where they're basically uh, now allowing that to be something that's an opt-in, but you don't need to download an app. So if you have a device, you can opt into this program and the Bluetooth uh, technology runs on the background. And anytime you're around another device, it kind of registers that encounter and that information can be shared. The big difference here is, of course, you're not downloading an app. It's instead a, an opt-in, so you'd have to still check a box, presumably, that says that you agree to the terms of this, but that many, many more people are likely to do it. And if you need a critical number of people to be enrolled in these programs for them to work, then this strategy obviously makes a lot of sense. And now there's a great article here about whether governments will end up using their own app that they've developed for this in their public health systems, or if they're going to just fall back to the technology from Google and Apple. And one key distinction is around GPS data. In other words, with the Google and Apple tech platform, there's no GPS data recorded. It doesn't say that I interacted with a person at a Costco or at a Walmart. It wouldn't necessarily know that, whereas some of these uh, government apps actually do track GPS data. So not only do they know who you interacted with, but also where that interaction occurred. And this gets back to that basic question of how do we balance public health and safety with civil liberties and privacy? Probably the biggest question that everyone has on their minds is what are the limits of this technology and are we really going to, as a society, roll this back once COVID-19 is over or is this technology going to become the norm and who owns that data once it's out there? And there are no easy answers I have to offer on this front, but I would love to see your thoughts in the comments below. So thanks for tuning in. Remember to hit the red subscribe button and the bell icon to get daily updates and to check out osmosis.org slash COVID-19 for all of our resources. Please remember to do your part to raise the line and flatten the curve. We're all in this together.